So this one, this one really got him stirred up yesterday. Sean asked, what defines a blue blood college football program? How many schools can claim blue blood status? Is Nebraska still in that category? And can it realistically get back? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to Twitter because I posted this. I retweeted it and I said, look, I want everyone's thoughts on this because I knew we were going to talk about it today. And I asked simply, in your opinion, and if you're driving around or you're watching on YouTube right now, think to yourself, when you say blue blood college football program, what do you think of? Because I quickly have found out a lot of you have different definitions. A lot of you think you have to have won multiple championships. A lot of you think you have to have you know, multiple Hall of Fame level head coaches. Some of you went straight to the jersey. How historic is the jersey? Some of you went in the abstract and you said, can you tell the story of college football without that team? If you can, they're not a blue blood. If you can't afford to leave that team out of the story of college football, they are a blue blood. Well, this is very different because it gets us a very different answer. I can't tell the story of college football without Nebraska, but yet if you require there to be some legitimacy of the modern day product on the field, then Nebraska wouldn't be a blue blood. See what I mean? Very quickly, we have converging paths here on a question, and then we have divergent paths on the answer. Here's where I fall. I think you have to have a little bit of everything. I do have to have some length of bone about your resume. I got into a huge argument with a buddy of mine back home in Georgia when Clemson won their second national championship over Bama in three years. He texted me. I was still out in California. And he texted me and he said, I guess you have to call Clemson a blue blood now because we had just done a segment like a month earlier when we were in our independent days where I said, Clemson's not a blue blood program. And then he shot back, are you telling me Clemson's not elite? Well, of course I'm not telling you that. They're about to play for another national championship. Sure, they're elite. We're not talking about elite. We're talking about blue blood. And so then they win another title. And he says, oh, I guess that takes care of that. Well, no, it didn't. And I texted him back. For that matter, if they win the next two, they still won't be a blue blood. It has nothing to do. These are different categories. You, you, it is impossible. It is absolutely impossible if you're a 10-year-old right now, no matter how good you do on the go-kart track, it's impossible for you to be a legal driver in the state of Tennessee. Why? Because there's a minimum baseline that the state has decided to set. And any state around the country, there's a minimum baseline. There's a certain age you have to be. Well, it's kind of the same way <clears throat> when it comes to blue blood programs. To me, I don't know what the minimum requirement for number of years of relevancy is. I just know it's more than 10 or 11. And by relevancy, I mean on a national scale. But if we look back at Nebraska, I, I can't tell the story of college football without Nebraska, but yet I can tell the story of the last 20 years without Nebraska. So my question becomes in my own mind, how, how heavily do I weigh modern day results? Not last five years, but if you've gone legitimately the last 15 years without really popping on the national radar screen, to me that matters. So here would be my answer to this question. My answer would be, you have to have been relevant on a national level over multiple decades. Preferably, you have won titles over at least two different generations. Uh, the third is, yes, I have to be able to apply legendary coaches with your program. The jerseys are important to me, not as important, but your brand is important. I do buy into the, can I tell the story of college football with or without you, because uh, that is important, sure enough. But here's the other part that I factor in, that some of you don't, and that's fine, it's an opinion question. I'm a believer that you can lose your blue blood status. This is not just a, a tattoo that's put on your forehead that you get to wear forever. And Nebraska, you could also ask the same about Tennessee. Uh, you could ask about those programs, were they blue bloods at one time? Certainly they were. Are they blue bloods currently? And I would argue, no, they're not. Now that's the downside. The upside is I am a big believer that just as much as you can lose your blue blood status, you can regain it. And so if Tennessee under Josh Heupel, or let's even go Scott Frost at Nebraska, if they were to resurrect those programs and all of a sudden they're playing for the SEC and Big Ten championships respectively three times over the next five years and they each lock down a national title, well, yeah, then they're back. And look, I don't even require you to meet an ultra lofty standard to regain your blue blood status. I'm going to save a seat for you here. I just, I put you out in the hallway, but you already know how to get to the classroom and get in the classroom. That's the important part. 
And so if you just behave yourself out there, if you'll just get back to winning ways, you don't have to win two or three national championships, just become another steady winner and I'll bring you back in and I'll put you in your seat. So yes, several of those factors matter to me. It's not just one thing and one thing only with regard to blue blood status. But having said that, I think you can lose your blue blood status. And I think right now Nebraska has, but I also think they can regain it.